Hello there. I'm at the southern tip of Campobello Island. I'm going to do a little video here of the island. I did one two or three years ago, but it was in the winter time, and I've always wanted to do another in the summer. So this is August the 8th, and I'm starting it. I'm here at the southern tip of Campobello at Mulholland Point, Mulholland Point Lighthouse, and the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial Bridge are in front of me. I'll show you those in just a moment. I'm trying to do a clip here without too much wind noise. I've already deleted a couple. There's a lot of wind here on the point. As I've said, this is the Mulholland Point Lighthouse, located at the southern tip of Campobello. In the background, there, shrouded in fog, unfortunately this morning, is Lubac, Maine. This light is no longer a functioning navigational aid. The Roosevelt Park now maintains it for historical purposes. And the tower does have a dim light that burns in it at night. The Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial Bridge, which connects Campobello with Lubac, Maine, just celebrated its 50th anniversary. Let's look at the Canada Customs Facility where you enter Canada from the U.S. This particular clip gives a good indication of the variance in the weather on Campobello. When I left my home on the northern end of the island a few minutes ago, it was 28 degrees, warm and sunny, and up here the fog is rushing in. After three or four hot days, we get fog. I'm sure by nightfall this evening, the entire island will be shrouded in fog. Well, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of luck. The fog has drifted out of here momentarily, so I'll give you a little glimpse of the town of Lubeck, a very picturesque little seaside town. We're now on the observation deck on Friar's Head in the International Park, looking off at some fog and East Bork in the distance. Also, you get a glimpse here of Dare Island and the shoreline of Welch Pool. And you'll see some of the salmon cages off the shore of Welch Pool. In the Roosevelt Campbell International Park now, it's the reception center, a uh, small museum exhibit area. I'll show you the Roosevelt Cottage and a little look at some of the pretty flower gardens here in just a second. Just a little look at some of the flowers behind the reception center, between the reception center and the Roosevelt Cottage. We'll be moving over in just a moment to get a better look at the cottage from a preferred observation point, but that is the cottage there. The cottage is a 32-room Dutch colonial style cottage, and it was a wedding gift to Franklin and Eleanor from Franklin's mother. The original estate was less than 10 acres, 8 or 9 acres, something like that, I forget exactly, but Currently, the International Park is close to 3,000 acres. Uh, most of it is a uh, natural area with trails and uh, small roads going through so that they can be enjoyed by anybody, whether you're in a vehicle or hiking. I 
I'm down behind the cottage now, and this is the view that you would have from the back verandas and the living room window, looking over towards Eastport, Maine. As I've said, the park is international, jointly funded by both Canadian and American governments. There are several restored cottages that date from the same era as the Roosevelt Cottage that now make up part of the park. This one is called the Hubbard Cottage, named after the family that owned it back in the Roosevelt era, era the Hubbards. Uh, they do an interesting thing here now. They have tea with Eleanor uh, twice a day. 20 people each time and it's free. You just have to pick up a ticket at the reception center and I guess they're almost always sold out, so to speak. It's full for each tea. Some of my family did it when they were visiting me a few days ago and said it was really interesting. You get some cookies and some tea and uh, two of the staff members talk about a lot of uh, the uh, highlights of Eleanor's life here on Campobello. I'm just about to leave this area of the park, but I have to show you my favorite piece of driftwood. It's an entire root system. Uh, it's been on the end of the reception center here for, well, I don't know, 20 years or more. It's still holding up anyway, but I think it's a beautiful work of art all by itself. I will only do a few seconds of this. The road is rough and, of course, the car noise as well, but I'm now taking you out in the natural area of the Roosevelt Park. There's a couple of things I'd like to show you. Um, and as I said before, the International Park is 3,000 acres. Well, there are two parks on this end of the island, the northern end of the island, and the parkland in total is close to 5,000 acres. This is the Glen Severn Road, gravel road, and uh, it separates the two parks. On the right-hand side of the road is the Roosevelt International Park, and on the left-hand side is the Herring Cove Provincial Park, which has camping and a nine-hole golf course and more trails and that sort of thing. But anyway, I will shut this off, and uh, when we get out to the locations, I'll show you what I want you to see. This is the southern head area of the island. Uh, it's in the International Park, but looking over towards the Provincial Park. It's like somebody has spent some time making a sculpture of some sort out of driftwood. And the fog is sinking in out here. You can't see the Provincial Park at all. The, over to the other end, you can see what... Uh, this, that's Eastern Head sticking out of the fog there. And off there in that shroud of fog is Grand Manan, and Grand Manan Island, the larger of the three Fundy Islands. And we always tease the people from Grand Manan, that's where they make the fog. It always comes in from that direction. Well, this is Liberty Point, something I wanted to show you unfortunately today shrouded in fog on a clear day you can see over to the state of maine and the most eastern point in the united states which is west quaddy light that is what we the local children here anyway call the frog rock and on a clearer day you'd be able to see why it does resemble a large bullfrog sitting in the water here i've got to get you out of here and back into some sunshine surely there must be some around here somewhere we're in a race with the fog. It's starting to get up this way, but hopefully we'll make it down to the northern end of the island before it completely takes over. A little earlier we were up on top of the observation deck on Friar's Head. That is Friar's Head, uh, where we were. Uh, the, the head, of course, part of the name comes from it being a headland that sticks out into the water. And if you can make out a pinnacle of rock at the base of it, uh, it's supposedly resembles a friar with his head bowed so that is where its name comes from a friar's head and this again is the city of Eastport across the way one 
of the salmon farm companies in the foreground here. Caged salmon. Salmon that I won't eat. You can if you want. But too many chemicals and antibiotics for my liking. And part of the village of Welchpool. This whole bay is called Friars Bay. But it's an inlet, a small bay, which is part of Passamaquoddy Bay. That's this side of the island. The other side, where we were out in the fog, is open to the Bay of Fundy. A little further down on the North Road, still in the village of Welch Pool, and that's the third of the three Fundy Islands over there, Dare Island, New Brunswick. And I'm not sure how well it will show up because it's still a bit offshore, but that's the car ferry coming over from Dare Island. It leaves Campobello on the hour, every hour between uh, 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. in the summer months. It's a privately run car ferry, so there's a toll involved, but it's well, around 20 less than $25, I guess, and it's a, a lovely boat ride, and then off the other end of Dare Island to the New Brunswick mainland is a government-run ferry, and there's no toll on that. It makes a nice leisurely way to travel. We're even further down on the North Road, still in the village of Welsh Pool. I'm standing out on a pier. I'll turn around in a moment and show you the boats here in the breakwater. That's my maternal grandparents' home. It's changed hands a few times since their death, but next door to that is my maternal great-grandparents' home. So I grew up in this particular area of the island, oh, just a few hundred yards up the road here in a house that's also changed hands numerous times over the years. But this is the North Road Breakwater. Some of the fishing fleet in. The land over in the background is Wilson's Beach, the other side of the island, and I live in that village now. I think by the looks of them, most of these boats are rigged up for either scallop dragging or scallops, depending on where you're from. Here we call them scallops or sea urchins, and probably both actually. It's two different seasons and these boats probably have a license to fish for both scallops and uh, sea urchins at various times. And obviously I guess both seasons are closed right now because it's a very nice day and the boats are in dock. Oh look, more fog and wind. <laughs> I'm now in the provincial park, the Herring Cove Provincial Park. Again, that's on the Bay of Fundy side of the island, and the fog is coming in. But I wanted to give you a look at the beach here. I'm on an observation deck. It's a beautiful black sand beach. Uh, sweeps all the way around to Southern Head, where we were a few minutes ago. And that's about as busy as it ever gets. There's probably 10 or 15 people on it right now. Um, the, the park here has 100 more than a hundred, I guess now, campsites. This has been quite full this summer, so I'm sure on a little hotter day than this there has been more people on the beach. But the problem here is the Bay of Fundy. Beautiful water, very cold. It only changes in temperature a few degrees between summer and winter, and our winter temperatures go down to minus 20. Uh, it doesn't freeze because of the salt content and the rise and fall of the tide. Uh, we have the highest rise and fall of the tide in the world on the Bay of Fundy. Not in this particular area of the Bay of Fundy. It's more noticeable at the head of the, up at the head of the bay. But uh, at any rate, that is the Herring Cove Beach in the Herring Cove Provincial Park. The park, uh, I guess I mentioned earlier, has a nine-hole golf course. There's a restaurant and the uh, campgrounds well used by the local people and tourists alike. This 
is Head Harbor Wharf on the northern end of the island. Head Harbor is the safest and deepest of our harbors, and the Head Harbor Wharf is the largest of the five public docks on the island, where most of the larger fleet is usually tied up. This, however, is the herring fishing season, so the larger of the boats are off earning their living. Not sure where that's from if you can make out that catamaran moored over on the other side of the harbor. Um, I've seen it around the island now for the last two or three days. Somebody with lots of cash available, that's a very expensive yacht. I'll get a closer look at it for you from the other side of the dock here. Well, there's a better shot, I guess, as close as I can get. It's a, a sort of a private marina over there. They can rent space or whatever. Um, it's flying a Canadian flag from the mast, which is proper under international law, whatever. It has to do that once it's cleared Canadian customs. And at the stern, there is a three-colored flag, green, white, and red, and something in the white field in the middle. I'm not sure what nationality that might be, but that's whatever country it's registered in. Uh, that is a beautiful yacht, I'm sure. Worth lots of money. This boat is owned by one of the local whale watch companies. It's the boat that they take you out whale watching on. There are numerous whale watch companies in the area, at least two here on Campobello, but there are whale watch companies over in Eastbourne and Lubeck, Maine, and some that even come from uh, St. Andrews, New Brunswick, down this far to watch whales. We have several varieties of whales in the area. Uh, finback, which is more common one right now, we're seeing it inshore. My family were staying at some cottages here on the island a few days ago and we saw finbacks just off in front of the cottage. And then the minke, which is the smallest whale in this area, and the right whale. The right whale is the one that you see the classic tail fluke in the air when it dives. It's about the only one that I'm in the area anyway that always shows the tail fluke on its way down. Well, this concludes our little tour of what I like to call my island here. We're now at the very northern tip of the island with a view of East Quaddy Light uh, called Head Harbor Light by the local people. Uh, it takes its name from the end of the bay that it's in. It's in the eastern end of the bay, so it's East Quaddy Light rather, rather than North Quaddy Light because it's on the northern end of Campobello. Anyway, in my opinion, the most beautiful lighthouse on the shore. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of Campobello. Leave some comments below. I'll be glad to reply. Thank you.